you know, uh, last night, again, was, was amazing. Yeah. And given that so many of you are new to us, and some of you are new to the principles, I was really, it was striking to me that when I started to talk with a number of you, and one of my questions is like, what drew you here? And so many of you, in your own unique original voice, said, um, basically, it's the feeling. The feeling drew you here, that there was something inside of you that was stirring and motivated you, inspired you to come here. And as we continued conversations, um, I kept hearing your wisdom, your natural wisdom, even though, again, a number of you were new. You were sharing these nuggets of wisdom that I I don't think you may be aware of, because it's it's so subtle sometimes, our wisdom, and our intellect can be so loud that we we may get like a little whisper of our wisdom, but then because we're more used to our intellect, we hold on to that. And so that's what I was struck by, is how much wisdom was coming out of you all last night. And I did say to a couple, I said, well, you can go home now. And I think I said it when I, Chip yeah. and I just, you know, welcomed you all here again, because what they were sharing was already so deep and such an indication of their... Uh, true nature, waking up. And so that, it was like the beautiful start to this weekend, because that's why we're all here, is to, to see, see our wisdom more deeply, rather than our intellect, and to honor it. Because the more we honor our wisdom, and listen to it, the more beautiful our life becomes. It's not like we won't have challenges and things that still come up, but the way we view our challenges in life become far, far easier. And even if we do get gripped from time to time, that becomes easier too. It's not so intense. It's not so um, like life is over. <laughs> You know, I've lost it. It's like y you begin to see that you never lose it because we are the principles. We are wisdom. It's not just that wisdom has our back uh, or that we apply the principles. We are the principles in action. And that's, that's a beautiful, rich spiritual fact. You know, it's, it's really, it's, it's beautiful listening to people. Like, everybody sitting in this room, um, us included, before we came across the principles, we, we looked in many directions to find some peace, some happiness. Um, some of us maybe searched more than others, but we have, you know. So what always occurs to me as I listen to people, especially when I do meet people that are, are just coming into the principles, but even people who've been around for a long time is, why, why did this, what happened? Why, why did this attract you to, to look into it further? What, what happened that first time that you heard something or listened to something? And it's not, it's funny because it's not always um, totally pleasant. Like I had a strong feeling when I first heard about it and it wasn't nice at all. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, it went against everything I'd thought, you know. But having said that, why the deep feeling? Why, why being struck that way, you know? So as the years have gone by and we've met more and more people and, and done this school for 10 years, I, I listen to people and they, they almost always say something along the lines that, you know, I was just, so I went, I talked to a friend and mentioned something about these three principles and there is a feeling, you know, and 
the most beautiful thing about that is that feeling, that, that noticing that something you've not, it's different than anything you've heard before. The reason that occurs for all of us at one point or another is that we're recognizing something we already know. I mean, that's, the only way, that's the only way that would happen. That's the only reason that happens is in a, a split second. It may even be words you've heard before. Like I, I was studying Buddhism and stuff before I met Sid, and so I had lots of words, you know, lots of ways of describing what I thought I wanted to find. And when I heard, first heard Sid, I, I would think, yeah, that, yeah, I already knew that, you know. But then there would be this feeling in spite of that. There would be this feeling, and it's, it's the recognition of our true nature. There's a part of us that knows. And through all these years, that's one of the most beautiful things I feel like we've gotten to witness. Like, in, in all kinds of places, in businesses, and working with police departments, working with inmates in prison. You know, you sit down with a group of inmates have never heard of anything of this. And at the end, there's people lit up or people in tears. There's people really moved. The only reason that that happens is that it's a recognition of something we know in our hearts. You know, one of the reasons we were really inspired to, to write up what we did for this invitation, when... When Ken and I and Chip and Jan and some of the other, you know, kind of pioneers uh, from the early days of, of learning with Sid, directly with Sid, there was nothing else out there in, in terms of Sid's materials. Like he hadn't written books, hadn't made tapes. It was just his living in his true knowledge after his profound enlightenment that started to draw people to him. It's like his his true knowledge and the love emanating from him was like a magnet in the world. And people arrived on Salt Spring Island without knowing why. Uh, because they they hadn't ever heard of Sidney Banks. You know, there were no videos, as I say, no tapes, nothing. But there was the feeling. This there's the feeling is is alive, like it's not just a feeling. It's, it's got substance. That rich, deep feeling that we're talking about is an expression of our spiritual nature. And it's that that was a magnet in the world, drawing people to the island with them not even knowing why. Fast forward 45 years to now, now there's a wealth of materials available in the world uh, on the three principles and Sid's teachings. There's well over a hundred books written, including some of my own. And everybody does their best to share what they know in their videos, just as Chip and I do for the videos for the school and so on. But there's all different levels, all different layers of understanding that's called Levels of Consciousness, which is another spiritual fact that Sid taught us all. Spiritual evolution is another word for that. That's our, our journey, is to evolve from the inside out, to become more of what we already are. And so now there's this wealth of material at all different levels, and what we've both observed in our journeys and doing webinars for people and traveling around the world, doing retreats and speaking at conferences, is that sometimes people that were seekers before and then found the three principles and, and were touched. But then it's easy to get gripped by thinking that all these other books that are out there and videos, that they may know something more than you do. And that's what we wanted this weekend to be about. To really, with all the greatest respect we can offer, is to turn you back to you. The real you. The spiritual you. 
and listen to your soul. Listen carefully. And sometimes when you listen really carefully to your soul, another word is consciousness. The principle of consciousness is soul. Consciousness of who and what we truly are on the inside. When we listen carefully, sometimes we may be moved to some action, the how-tos that come from wisdom. Like we may be drawn to sharing with the world, to being in service, as Sid was. After he had his enlightenment, he ended up going back to his ordinary job for 10 months. And then the feeling inside him was so strong, he knew that it was time for him to offer what he had uncovered to the world. And he left his work without any idea of financial reward. That was the last thing in his mind about earning money from this. It was, how can I serve? How can I share these spiritual gifts I've uncovered with the world? That was his primary focus. And he ended up coming back to the island where they had had a summer cottage and where Sid had actually had his experience. And it wasn't until last night where I had something new about that. Because... I don't know whether I asked that question or one of the new people asked me that question, like, why did Sid end up coming back to the island? Like, why didn't he go to a big city where he could have had more venues available to him and people could have come to Vancouver or Victoria? Like, why did he end up coming back to the island? And then it dawned on me, well, of course, this is where it happened. You know, like it didn't matter that it was this small little island kind of tucked away, you know, the banana belt of Canada. He came back to where this profound experience had revealed to him the true nature of life. And and so now, again, here we are, and we have that same opportunity while we're here this weekend where this epic experience happened that is having ramifications throughout the world, in some ways still under the radar, you know. But that's part of what I observed also last night, that there are a number of people here that didn't even know each other and we're discovering the principles, and then they come here from another country and realize, wow, you only live 20 miles away from me. I've never met you before. I didn't know you were interested in the principles. Other people that were involved in other traditional modalities of coaching and that kind of thing and may have Skyped but never met in person, and then they find themselves here kind of like it's, what's the word, serendipitous? that here they are drawn here and they meet each other in person and discover, wow, this is, this is my new inside-out journey that I know is real. I resonate with the truth of that. And that's what we want you to embrace this weekend. Embrace your own wisdom. It will simplify your life that you'll stop going to so many other trainings and things. It's not against the trainings. Like if you don't come back to this school again, we'd be thrilled. <laughs> Honestly, we'd be thrilled because we'd know that you're listening to yourself more. And then maybe in two, three years you feel like, gee, you know, I'd like to come back again and that would be great. But the, uh, the, the idea, the spiritual fact is for you to see who you are and trust it and then just live your life. Hmm. See, one of the reasons I think that's important is the same reason, one of the reasons that Sid decided to stay on Salt Spring is that he loved his ordinary life. He loved his garden, and he liked cleaning his car, he liked washing the dishes, he liked going for a walk with his dog. 
spending time with his wife. He loved his ordinary life. He told us many times that, I mean, sometimes we think because Sid had that great experience in the beginning that he didn't continue to have insights. He certainly did. And he, and he would often say that in the quiet of his garden, in the quiet of his ordinary life is when he had his most profound insights after his experience. And that's true for us too, that as many as, as beautiful programs that are out there and, and, you know, when you see one that's really appropriate for you, that you've got a feeling, then, then you go, you know, but I talk to so many people now, new clients, sometimes younger people, they're just going to everything in sight and they, um, as I listen to them, I hear that they're not, they're not living it in their ordinary life. You know, they're, they're back to the search in a way, you know? So to me, there's a balance. You, you listen, you go to something, you get a feeling, you hear something new, and then you live it in your life for a while. I, I've told this story many times, but I can still, it still rings in my ears. When we were first around Sid, we were like everybody, we were so excited because our lives were changing. Our marriages were coming together. Our uh, ability to operate in the business world was changing. Everything was changing. So we were really excited about it. So we're over at Sid's, maybe seven or eight of us sitting around in his backyard and he's flipping burgers on the grill, right? And we're all going on about my thinking this and my thinking that and oh yeah, and we did this and I saw that that was above the line and this was below the line. We were all talking about all this stuff, right? And Sid's just flipping burgers, you know, and we're going on about our thinking and analyzing it and such. And he, he just suddenly said, oh, quit talking about that stuff. And I'm like, really? <laughs> you know, isn't, isn't this everything, you know? He said, if, if you think about it and talk about it all the time, you're never going to see what you've learned. Okay? You're never going to see what you've learned. He says, just go home and be ordinary and you'll find out what you've learned, what you're finding. And truer words were never, never spoken. You know, like we've seen it over and over again. Uh, a few years down the road here, not very long after we first met Sid, we were just having coffee in his house one day and he turns to Jan and he says, you guys ought to move away from here. <laughs> and I went, what, what? He said, yeah, yeah, he said, and we had, there was some discussion before that about my wanting to work in business and so on. And so when he said that, it was like, on the one hand, I went, what? On the other hand, I just knew it was, it was time. Jan and I both knew it was time. And so we moved away and it was fantastic. It was like, all of a sudden we were in this world where nobody was talking about the principles or analyzing their thinking. We just had to go and be ordinary people and start a career and, and, and do our jobs. And it's just like things came pouring into us in that period, it just came pouring into us. And um, so when we look around now, we do see sometimes people just spending too much time, sometimes even too much money. I mean, I've had young clients say, you know, I'm going to go to this program. I really can't afford it, but I'm going to find a way to do it, you know, kind of thing. And they've just been to three programs over the last two months. And I just want to say, just pick up Sid's materials, you know, just listen to a recording, listen to somebody that's speaking from that place and you'll find your own insights and then you'll know what you really want to do in the community. You'll know what's the best thing for you to do. Um, it's that settling down, that finding that ordinary life is, there's so much in that, you know.